Good morning, this is Deb Watson and this tutorial shows how to paint a watercolor landscape, a fall scene with a stone bridge and a river. This free tutorial is at watsonwatercolor.com. I'm painting this with just four colors, cerulean or light blue, and danthrone or a dark blue, transparent pyrrole orange, and any good yellow. Start with the faraway trees using a thin wash of cerulean or light blue and a light green made with light blue and yellow. To make it even more watery, I'm wetting the area first with clean water. Start with some blue and add a bit of green. The colors can overlap, but you don't have to paint a solid wall of color. Leave it light and airy. The area under the bridge will also be fairly light. I start with a little green at the top and add a watery mix of brown that's made with orange and blue. I decide I want more green in there, so I dab up some of the brown with a paper towel and add more green. I'll add some salt for texture once this starts to dry. Next, I'm going to paint some of the foreground. Mix a thicker puddle of light green and a same puddle of dark green, dark blue plus yellow. The foreground rocks are covered with green moss. I want them lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. I start with watery yellow on the top and I'm painting around the leaves that are laying on the rocks. After the yellow, I paint a little light green. A damp brush is perfect for blending those together a bit. Under that, darker green. And I add a little of the brown for variation. And then I create some intentional blooms by dotting the drying area with clean water. So the moss covered rocks are going to be light at the top and dark at the bottom. The bushy areas can be any color you want. I'm using mostly dark green and orange in random blends, but feel free to make yours any of the four colors you have or any blend that you can make with those colors.
At the bottom of the tree, I'm painting some dark green grass. Now that the background is dry, I add a light to medium grass area under the bridge on the right. We have quite a variety already in our painting with just four colors. Now we're going to add distant trees in the background, but don't overdo it. Keep them light in value in different shades of grays and browns made with your leftover colors and make them different widths, some thin, some thicker. Try to leave an area without any trees for variation. If your trees look too dark, just dab up most of the paint. To add leaves to your trees, use a small piece of natural sponge and lightly sponge on a few yellow, orange, or green leaves. I'm going to start with green leaves and see what I think. Next comes the water. The water is an important part of this landscape. You want a graded wash, light at the top, almost white, going down to a deep dark blue with a little brown at the bottom. You can wet the paper first if you think that will help with blending. I'm starting on dry paper with clean water. I paint back and forth horizontally and I'm painting around the few rocks I left in the river. Adding dark under the foliage where it would be in shadow. As I near the bottom, I dip into the darker blue, first blending it with some of the light blue, Getting a good graded wash in your water is really important. So take your time. At the very bottom, I decide to throw in a little leftover brown to make it even darker. I do a few back and forth strokes just to blend it together and let it dry.
Now you can mix a black with your dark blue and your orange. The underside of the bridge is black, especially on the left side. The right side is a little bit lighter where the light bounces up off the water. So I just lift a little bit of that color back up. I'm also using my black to outline the stones and the edge at the top. Now for the bridge. I'm painting my bridge with mixes of dark blue, black, and brown. I paint a bit of one color, then I add some of a different color, so they blend a little on the paper, but you can still see the different colors. If you want your bridge to be moss covered, you can add some green in now, or you can put a little green on at the end. As it starts to dry, once again, I dot in clean water to make blooms. I'm saving the stones around the opening for last. A little more dotting of the water and it's time to finish the rocks. I use my black mix to paint a reflection at the bottom of the rock, but leave a line of white between the rock and the reflection. I add some black to the bottom of the rock also, and a thicker coat of light green so I can build up the saturation of color. Last, I sprinkle on some salt. The front area rock needs a lot more color saturation too, so I repaint it with more paint and less water. and I have to mix even more black for the bottom. Having the closest bit of landscape being very saturated in color makes for a realistic looking painting.
For the post on the bridge, the two shorter posts will be a little lighter in value and the two taller posts, which are closer to you, will be darker. I left the trees for last. In my photo, there was a dark shadow at the bottom of the trees, which I put in with black. The tree itself is a pretty watery and light brownish gray. and I add the shadows from some other trees while that color is still damp. The thin tree is also very light, but I make the top of it dark so it stands out. When the posts are dry, I lift up the left side where the sunlight would be hitting it. And add a darker shadow under the top and the middle edge. The spaces on the rocks that we left for leaves, the leaves can be any light color. Be sure to add a dark shadow underneath each one. I'm dotting in some of my dark on the moss also to give it texture. The rocks in the river are a light gray and I leave some white at the top and add a shadow at the bottom. My tree shadows have wimped out, so I repaint them slightly darker. Now I need to brush the salt off from under the bridge and add a bit to that area. Using leftover color, I create another hill on the left and add some modeling with light green. A thin dark bare tree on the right and some reflections under the rocks and we're almost finished. To draw the lines for the guardrails, I use a black ink pen. Isn't it amazing all the range of color and value you can get with just four colors? minute idea is to add orange to more of the foliage and I'm happy with it. If you'd like to give this tutorial a try, visit watsonwatercolor.com for the full free lesson. No matter what you want to paint, you'll find lots of fun tutorials and valuable painting tips. So visit today. Happy painting!